Hi, welcome back to the workshop for episode four of the Rickenbacker 62012 string build. And in this episode, we're going to be doing some prototyping on that massively complicated headstock. So, about this headstock, this thing has layers of complexity when you start to think about what we need to do. Before this is finished, I'll need to drill 36 holes in it. Six of those will have to be counterboard, so that's 42 drilling operations on something this size which in of itself is quite a risky thing to do. Then we need to add these slots and cut it to shape and route it and do all the normal stuff that we do with a headstock. So there is all sorts of stuff to do. To make it even more complex, these tuners actually fit at 90 degrees to the side of the headstock. And because of the side of the headstock is curved, all these are drilled at a different angle. So that's one thing that we need to bear in mind. And I think the main issue with this is, if I go about this in the wrong order, I could make my life very difficult and potentially I could make my job impossible. So I have to think very long and hard about how I'm actually going to do this and the order of operations to be successful. Now, I think it would be sensible to drill these holes early on in the process because the last thing we want to be doing is breaking out the inner wall of these slots when we drill through. However, it's not as simple as mounting this thing on the blank, marking where these need to go, squaring a line across, and then drilling from those positions because they will actually be wrong. What we need to do is actually use a sliding bevel to measure those angles and then transfer them on the right position. And to do that, we need to take this off the blank multiple times. So for that reason, I think my easiest way to do things would be to drill these holes first so that I can then use locating pins to get this template on and off in exactly the same position six times to get those angles marked properly. From there we can then square those lines across to the center line that I've marked in here and we've got a fair chance of drilling those holes in the right place. However, that still doesn't get us to a position where we can drill those holes at the right angle. Now I think measuring those angles and setting everything up that way would be a little bit of a nightmare. But what I can do is I can actually put these into a vise that I have here. So I can obviously fasten that in the right position. I can clamp them both in the vise and then I can tilt the bed on my drill press until I can line the drill bit up with these. Change the position of the vise and then drill in the appropriate position. Hopefully that way we can get these as close as we can to it. And then obviously because I want to use this vise to mount it and keep things in the right position, I'll leave these square edges on the blank for the time being. And then once probably we've drilled all the holes and we've cut those slots. We can then mark it out, take it to the bandsaw, get it cut down, route it to shape properly. So in summary, there's an absolute ton of work to do on this, but I really, really do think it's worthwhile doing this prototyping stage just to make sure we don't mess it up. Okay, so that's the blank, just positioned on a couple of little pins just to keep it in place. So we'll start working our way through and just setting these angles up. Okay, so that's it all set out and I've marked all the centers on both sides. So it's just a case now of getting this to the drill press and getting everything set up. And I've actually brought the drill press over to the big bench just to make things a little bit easier on myself. 
And I'm lucky in one sense because I have a, a little bit of a snazzy drill press that I can actually move the chuck backwards and forwards, which will make my life a little bit easier. So first thing I'm going to do is just get this positioned so that this drill is following the line that we want to drill down. And that's basically just a case of tilting the bed until it's at the right angle. That one's not too far out there. And then I can drop this back down and then just position everything where it needs to be. Lock it all off and start drilling. Now what I've done is I've set my vernier so that when I get that into the actual hole that we're drilling, that is the depth that we need to cut. So I've got a really accurate way of measuring the depth. So let's give it a bash. Okay, so there's those six holes drilled. That was quite a faff, took quite a long time to do, but if I get a tuner or two, they've actually gone in exactly as they need to, and they're all able to kind of sit down against the edge of the headstock, bearing in mind, of course, that they've still got a straight edge there, so that will get cut away, but I think we'll still be okay. There's not that amount of difference really. So I'd say that's been largely successful. So with that done, the next thing is to think about getting these two slots cut into it. And to do that, we're gonna to have to modify this template and cut the slots out on there. I'm gonna do that off camera. It's gonna be quite straightforward, nothing really to look at. Just gonna drill a hole at each end and then take my coping saw to clean most of the waste out and then I'll just clean it up with files and stuff. You've all seen me do that kind of thing before. So like I say, I'll do that off camera. Okay, so there are the slots cut out. Probably took an hour or so to kind of drill them, cut them out with the coping saw and then to file them into shape. They're a little bit undersized if anything because there are some little inconsistencies that you're always gonna get when you're cutting stuff by hand. So what I can do is once these are routed out, any kind of inconsistencies that are passed forward will be waste material that needs removing so we can then kind of fettle everything down to how it needs to be. So to get going with this again, I'm simply going to reposition this with the handy pins that we've been using and as best I can kind of mark this out which looks a little bit scruffy but I'm sure it'll be fine then we can get this to the drill press I'll probably just chain drill most of this waste out save the time with the coping saw because there really isn't any need because we're going to obviously be routing this once we've done so I'll move the drill press back into position and we can get this all drilled out In the end, I just got the jigsaw on those just to make things move along a little bit quicker. So with the bulk of the waste out of the way, it's just a case of attaching the template. And we're just gonna go with some good old fashioned super glue masking tape. And then I can get that into the vise. And then we can get the small trim router on the job. And I'm just gonna use a straight quarter inch bit and just run the shank of the bit around the template and let the cutting portion of it do its work on the actual headstock. So I'll be back with you as soon as we've got that set up.
Okay, so that's the routing done. Uh, it took quite a long time to do that. It was very awkward, but we got there in the end. Now, up until this point, I was kind of thinking, am I wasting my time doing this prototyping? Because it had all gone very, very smoothly and kind of everything that I thought was gonna happen had happened up until this point because routing this was an absolute pain. What I hadn't accounted for was that the slot I'd cut out initially wasn't wide enough for this router cutter to go into. So I've had to start with this tiny little one, which did do the job, but it wasn't long enough. So I then had to take the template off, flip it over, reattach the template, redo the bottom half of it, take the template off, again reattach it to the top and then I can go around with the bigger bit and it's mostly done a really nice job there's a few little bits that will need cleaning up I'm not going to do it on this one obviously because it's a prototype but on the real one it will need a little bit of fettling on that slot but nothing that we can't handle so next up I'm going to get this to the bandsaw whip off this excess we can get this template on for a final time do the perimeter drill these tuner holes out to their final dimension and we're pretty much done on it. Okay, so there it is with all the holes drilled out, looking very good, happy with that. And then, by the magic of video, here it is with all the tuners on. Now that, I think, is A, a brilliant bit of design. It really does kind of work very well if, for someone with big fat sausage fingers like me, it's going to be a little bit fiddly, I think, to tune. But it does all work very very well and in terms of access to the tuners through these slots it's worked out brilliantly it's perfectly aligned with all the string holes on the tuner post so yeah happy days so i'm going to call that a successful prototype i've learned a few little lessons along the way there are some things that i'll do differently next time but all in all i think it's worked very very well and to get us all caught up on the costs and the time taken so far on this project, up until this point, I'd spent £67. Now, the tuners are Wilkinson Deluxe Cluson style tuners. They're not massively expensive, but there was two sets of them. So they came to £54. So in total, so far, I've spent £121. In terms of the hours, I was up to six hours on the job. The work I did in the last episode of cleaning up the neck blank, getting that to the stage that it's at, was a further two hours. And then I've spent four hours getting this to where it is on the prototype. So in total, that's 12 hours spent. So from here, the next step is to put this to one side, break out the neck blank again, glue on some ears for the headstock, and then get that to the same stage as this before we can crack on and do some other work on it. But all that is going to be for the next episode. I'll leave this one here. So as always, like if you've liked, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.